Farm side of the uh, of those uh, windows, right? 73, take care. KC1 MR and J2 US. Next up, uh, November 2, Zulu Golf, November. Hey, good morning, Jeff. And to the DN, uh, Darian Furrow, New York. And uh, we started at 21 below, and we're up to 8 below. Heading towards 4 above. Over the Okay, Jerry. Well, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess the good news is this is not going to last for more than a day or two. Temperatures are going to head back up for just about everybody. Two zero nine nine three lifetime member from Peru, New York. Thanks, Jerry. Clear with uh, N two Z G N next door. N three F J Z here, and uh, I have finally completed the solder smoke audio amplifier module, and I've put it in the lineup. And um, this is the, uh, the results. Now, I've um, also paralleled with a AB switch my original amp. And I'm going to do a comparison in my, uh, my thoughts on this particular amp. <clears throat> I was able to find an audio transformer from an old AM radio uh, that I have in there now. So... Terry, uh, 73 to you. 30709, uh, a little advice uh, from just, uh, I haven't been licensed for very long. I'm, I'm kind of a newbie here, maybe about 53 years, I suppose. But if you arrive on a frequency, before asking if it's in use, just listen a little bit. Listen first and see if you hear anything going on. And then if you don't hear something, <clears throat> go ahead and call to see if the frequency. Okay. Now, considering this is only a three transistor amplifier it does pretty good it will drive this this uh this uh, computer speaker but it will it will run out of steam if you try to bring the audio too high Also keep in mind, I have a lot of wires flying around in the air here, so I tried this without the switch, and the results were pretty much the same. You could comfortably listen to it. Uh, I wouldn't call it room-filling volume, but if you're in front of the speaker and it's reasonably quiet, it's a very comfortable listening uh, volume. You didn't have to strain it all to hear it. And as a comparison, I'll flip the switch over to the other amp, which uses seven transistors. Uh, you got a fine business copy, and uh, your name, sir. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, the frequencies in you, sir. Good luck in the contest, but please QSY. No, this is November Julia to uniform, sir, and you've arrived on top of the net, sir. Please QSY. Ah, okay. There was a Delta Zero call. We think you have this frequency. Bye-bye. Um, I'm talking in and uh, beautiful 5-9 signal from Rhode Island down into... Cape May, New Jersey. First time in my logbook, Howard, are you familiar with the East Coast Damage Radio Service? Uh, QSL, uh, uh, vaguely familiar. Um, now back to the, the three transistor amp. on 40 meters, always on 7255 since uh, 1968, Howard. Hey, do me a favor, go to the internet, uh, Al Gore's amazing internet, and go to ecars7255.com, ecars7255.com. 
Gmail.com, and uh, we'd love you to consider joining us. We have over members, and the membership supports our very extensive grants and scholarships program. We awarded $9,500. In- okay, back on the 7 transistor amp. 99.9% of all funds go towards the grants and scholarships. So give that a um, give that a look see. Welcome to 40 meter sideband, and I hope you come back to 7255 Walton Coast Amateur Radio Service. Beautiful 59 signal from Rhode Island. Take care. W1HSB and J2US. This is the East Coast Amateur Radio Service, and I'm standing by for any mobiles, please. Mobiles only. Any mobiles? Telling the story over and over, it's like a show. And uh, I grew up around ham radio. I knew most of the lingo. I would watch my dad. I would sit with him, and sometimes he'd let me talk to people with the third party agreement. Okay, so all in all, it does does fairly well. Like I said, if you're in a reasonably uh, quiet environment and you're in front of the speaker, uh, you definitely will hear it. Uh, it's not low. It's reasonable but it, it's not what I would call room-filling volume, whereas the 7 transistor amp will definitely uh, drive it to where you could be actually in another room and hear it. Okay, and the difference between the two is that the, um, the Class A amp with the transformer uh, uses 24 components, and the, uh, the uh, Class or the push-pull uh, amp has uh, actually uh, 29 components. The Class A uses three transistors and the push-pull uses seven. So there is a little bit of a price difference, but all in all the complexity, as you can see, is not all that much different as far as uh, the wiring is concerned. And then here are the two schematics. Of course, this is the uh, original solder smoke three transistor class a amp and then next to it on the other monitor is the uh, push pull and i'm going to be doing a little bit more on this particular amp uh, the original transistor is the mps 6562 and the uh, mps 6531s are no longer available however uh, I've been exploring the possibility of using the uh, 2N4403 and the uh, 2N4401s. Now, as you can see here, the difference uh, between the two sets of transistors is that the uh, the 4403 and the 4401 uh, is about 600 milliamps uh, max, and then of course the original uh, transistors, uh, the MPS60. Uh, 531 and 6562, they're one amp. Uh, I don't, I think I have some 03s, but 01s I don't, so I need to order those, but I believe the one 
the 4401 is comparable to a 2N2222. So maybe I'll do that and in, in, in this particular amp and then give it a test too. But I think um, we should uh, hear some probably very little difference between the two. So I will, like I said, I'll have another video later <clears throat> with this particular amp uh, with the uh, substitute transistors and we'll see how that one does. And here's the, uh, the solder smoke original class A amp with the transformer. Oh, this one doesn't use a transformer. It's uh, a capacitor. Ice, um, a capacitor separates the speaker from the push pull, and um, that's how that one goes. Okay, 7.3 for now, and this pretty much concludes the Solder Smoke Direct Conversion Receiver series of videos, and I uh, hope you enjoyed them and got something out of them, perhaps. And the, uh, the video, there's a link to a website where I have all the schematics of my particular build posted, and there's also a link to Bill and to CQR's uh, website or his blog where he has the original schematics. Like I said, mine's probably 99.8% identical to what they built. Uh, I just added a few more bypass capacitors here and there because they're separated into individual modules and I wanted to have maybe uh, split the circuit. There wasn't a bypass capacitor on the other module, so I just added one there. It's maybe one or two. Also, I'm not sure about the transformer. Like I said, this is an audio output transformer from a transistor radio. It was a push-pull. Uh, the specs uh, compared to another transformer I thought should be here uh, were a little different. So perhaps maybe the, uh, the lack of um, volume, room-filling volume, I should say. Maybe the transformer's not quite what it should be. All right, I'll leave you with that. 7-3, everyone. N3, FJZ.